What's good, my beautiful people? Back with another video. It's your boy 88. Today we're talking about self-control. I got four more key scriptures for y'all. So we're gonna dive into it. When I put them on the screen, make sure y'all jot them down, screenshot them, do whatever you gotta do. But let's make sure that we apply these things, me and you. Let's get it. We must gain self-control over ourselves, or we will be slaves to the things that can control us. Things that can control us are lust, money spending, temptation, food, gluttony, or speech. There's so many other things. I know in the last video I was talking about anger per se, but in this one, we're talking about a plethora over these four scriptures. So the first scripture is gonna be in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. I'm gonna put that on the screen for you all. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue has power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Hey, let's make sure we're speaking life into our situation. Let's make sure we're speaking life into other people's situation and, and encouraging them. You know what I mean? We don't have to speak negatively. We don't have to speak down upon people. Let's speak life. If we don't have anything nice to say, it's better for somebody to be silent. The next verse is going to be in Titus chapter 1, verse 8. It says, rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-control, upright, holy, and disciplined. Hmm. Those characteristics right there, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. That is all throughout the Bible. But in the world, we have the unholy, uncontrolled, undisciplined. You see what I'm saying? So look at how the world is. Examine your heart and see if you're like that. And I have to do the same for me. But it's best for us just to follow what the biblical truth is. God wants us to be self-controlled. He wants us to be disciplined. He doesn't want us to be out of control. You feel what I'm saying? We have to allow scripture to mold our heart. We have to allow God to mold us because we are the clay and we are the work of his hands. The true power comes when we truly relinquish. I know we're talking about self-control, but when we relinquish control to Jesus Christ and let him guide our life, we are learning how to gain a sense of control. And if you want to read up on examples of Jesus' life when he was living on earth, he had very much self-control. He was tempted too. He was tempted a lot. When he was fasting, Satan tried to tempt him to jump off. Jump off. You're not going to die. But he had self-control over his mind, over his actions, and over his body and his spirit. And we must do the same in this day and time. So in Romans chapter Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it's, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is and his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Don't conform to the way of this world. They want you to fail. They want you to be out of shape. You know what I mean? They want you to be a lover of food. They want you to be a lover of bad speech. They want you to be a lover of toxicity. They want you to be undisciplined. They want you to be all these things that God doesn't want us to be because they know if we are truly embodying these God-like traits and what he asks for us to do, in biblical scriptures, we can truly become something powerful. We can truly lead more people to Christ because we can't lead people to Christ if we're not disciplined. You know, they say, set the example. We can't set the example if we're not doing any of these things, because if we're not doing any of these things, we are setting an example. But it's in bad examples, quite not what God wants us to. You feel what I'm saying? It is good for us to apply these teachings. So the things that I'm teaching you, the things that you learn if you're at church or watching a video or just wherever, or if you're just reading the Bible on your own, we should be applying these things. And I have a scripture to support that too in Philippians chapter four, verse nine, put that on the screen. Whatever you have learned or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Peace is amazing. You know what I mean? The God of peace is gonna be within you everywhere you go. We have to put these things into practice. We have to put the things that we learn into practice every day, one step at a time. Small victories amount to huge victories. We have to just do little by little every day. Control what you can control. Don't let the things that you overly love control you. Don't let the, the love of food control you. Don't let the love of bad speech control you. Don't just think that if somebody slanders you, you know that they're better than you. It's better to retain your peace. It's better to keep that serenity. You feel what I'm saying? It's all better for that. And it's all better for you. And God will reward you for keeping self-control. Like I said in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28, in my last video, a man who has a short temper is like a city without walls. If you have no walls, then the enemy can just get in and do whatever they want because you didn't have your protection up. But if you have your protection up, and like Philippians 4, 9, it says, put these things into practice, the God of peace will be with you. In life, there are certain things that are out of our control. The way the sun comes up and comes down, we don't control that. 
We don't control how our coworkers act. We don't control how they wake up in the morning. We don't control the traffic. But what can we control? Our patience, our speech, how we treat people, and a plethora of other things. Key thing in this video, and I want you to really gain this, control what you can control.